Couple of things before we begin this actual video. One, I'm going to be live streaming on Twitch from now on. So if you want to follow me over there, you can use twitch.tv forward slash UFDisciple. Link will be in the video description. And if you have Amazon Prime, you can sub for free for, it gives me some money, but it doesn't cost you anything because you have Amazon Prime. It gives you Twitch Prime. You can hit the sub button and then you get free subscription anyways. But then also I'm going back to America. I'm recording like five or six videos today so that we can get it all done. So that while I'm on the plane ride, we're still getting videos out. Anyways, I'm going back to America. Expect new videos from random locations. And with that being said, let's jump into the video. So when we originally toyed around with the idea and wrote the script for this video, it was all about gaming laptops finally seeming like a good deal thanks to GPU price going crazier than I will be in another year or two if I keep licking graphics cards, which is why I stopped. Why I stopped. Surprisingly though, we found that buying a gaming laptop instead of paying full stupid price for graphics cards made a lot of sense if you needed a full system. But before we could actually get around to filming it, crypto prices started going the way of the dodo and the GPU stock and pricing started to regain some semblance of normalcy again. Dang you, you reasonable prices and changing our video ideas. Anyways, but because mama didn't raise no quitters, we decided to run with the idea anyways, only this time without massively overpriced graphics cards tipping the scales in the favor, favor of gaming laptops. So with pricing across the board being a heck of a lot more fair than they were just a few mere months ago, just how much more are you actually paying for gaming laptops compared to equivalent desktop builds? Well, to answer that question, we'll need a laptop, two even. First up, what better than the beast we actually recently reviewed, MSI's GT75 Titan 8RG. And on the more budget-friendly side of things, we have Acer's Predator Helios 3. 100, not 3,000, my bad. So the GT75 Titan is one of the first laptops to feature Intel's fancy six core, 12 thread core i9-8950HK processor and is equipped with the powerful GTX 1080, 32 gigabytes of DDR4 to 2666 megahertz RAM, two 512 gigabyte MBMU drives running in Super Raid 4 and a one terabyte hard drive. It also features a 17.3 inch 4K IPS level G-Sync display, as well as a fully mechanical RGB decked out steel series keyboard and all of the other things that make a laptop and it comes in at a massive $4,449. 4, $4,449. Not four, 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 there's a lot of fours in there. It's a big number. The Predator Helios 300 is a far more tame beast, featuring a Core i7 7700HQ, a GTX 1066 gig, 16 gigs of DDR4, a 256 gigabyte SSD, and a 15.6 inch 1080p display, and all of the other little things we'll be including in our comparison, and it'll only set you back around $1,049. Okay, we have all the specs we need, so what would a semi-equivalent desktop build look like? But from what we can put together, they look a, some, a little something like this. GT75 equivalent first up, let's kick things off at the high end, and in order to match the specs of the GT75 Titan, we'll need a $340 Core i7-8700K because it features the same core and thread count as the i9 and is unlocked for overclocking. We'll also need a coffee like motherboard that'll allow us to overclock and MSI's $100 Z370-A Pro should do the trick. Next up is EVGA's $600 GTX 1080 SC Gaming, a 32 gigabyte kit of Corsair's Vengeance 2666 megahertz RAM, which is $358, two of Samsung's 512 gigabyte and 960 Pro NVMe drives totaling 650 bucks and a $44 one terabyte Western Digital Blue HDD. As for peripherals, we picked the $550 28 inch 4 4K G Sync display from Acer because while it's not the same size, getting 4K and G Sync in the same thing is really expensive. And then we have SteelSeries $123 Apex M7, M750 RGB keyboard and MSI's Interceptor mouse coming in at $50. The reason we choose keyboard and mouse is because that's what you get with a laptop. You get a mouse pad and a keyboard. It's not the same, but you still like that's what you get. You got a way to actually operate the computer. And then lastly, we'll need to pick out a few other parts to really complete this building. That includes Corsair's $100 RM550 watt power supply, a decent $100 6 UPS to take the place of a battery, a cheap $41 PCI Express Wi-Fi adapter because laptops come with Wi-Fi, a $20 SD card reader because these laptops come with SD card readers, and a $90 chassis from Fantex, and finally, a copies of Windows 10 Pro at 89 bucks. All of that brings our total to $3,261, a massive $1,238 less than the Titan. And now, this isn't an exact science, and we're 100% sure our desktop build is lacking a lot of functionality present in the Titan. Heck, we didn't even take cooling away webcam or audio into account, but still, that's a pretty major markup. It seems, in this case, we're paying a pretty hefty price premium for portability in Intel's stupid new i9 chip. Why? Why call it i9? It's just an overclockable i7. You had this on previous laptops. I have the GT73 sitting right over here. Oh my goodness. Like, 
Big thanks to MSI South Africa for sending with me with this to America. But this, this has a 7820HK. Guess what? Guess what the HK stands for? It stands for overclocking. And guess what? It's an i7. It's not an i9. It's the exact same gosh dang thing. It's just an older generation. It's not an i9. It's just an overclockable i7. You don't get to call it a 99 just because it can overclock it all. <sighs> Anyways. What about our lower end matchup? Well, the Predator Helios 300's older, less impressive parts make for a less depressing outcome on price dis disparation, disparateness. Let's find out. So at the heart of this build is Intel's $303.69 Core i7 i7700, Gigabyte's $85 GA B250 H33 board, EVGA's $300 1066GB SC Gaming Mini, two 8 gigabyte sticks of Corsair Vengeance 2400 MHz RAM, and a 256 gigabyte SSD from ADATA. Now, if you've been following along, those parts alone put us at $939.69. Adding in all of the other parts we'll need, including a 1080p monitor, a keyboard, a mouse, power supply, UPS, Wi-Fi adapter, SD card reader, case, and a copy of Windows brings our total to just over $1,460. That's $410 more than the Acer Predator Helios 300. And just like before, we haven't even looked into things like speakers and a webcam. And whether it's due to the still recovering GPU prices or you know RAM prices or something else we can't think of right now, clearly going for a lower spec gaming laptop is the way to go if you're looking for a fully equipped system. So now, if the question is how badly are we getting ripped off by gaming by buying gaming laptops, the answer is simple. We're actually not. At least not nearly as often or by as much as we'd assumed. MSI's GT75 Titan looks to be more of an exception rather than a rule. I mean, the thing's an absolute behemoth packing specs that most people don't need. And then like even with this thing, this has two 1070s, a, a G-Sync display, 4K as well. Like it, it has basically the same specs, an older processor and two graphics cards in this gosh dang little laptop thing. And when I say little laptop, my arm hurts from picking that up. It's an exception rather than a rule. It's a brand new product featuring Intel's most powerful mobile consumer processor ever. And it fits a whole bunch of hardware into a surprisingly small, although exceedingly bulky and heavy for a laptop package. It also features a beefy cooling system to keep all of its high performance parts in line, as well as a bunch of other choice features. Our build lacks many of the features we just mentioned, and we didn't opt for the highest end parts we could find. All factors that would have driven up the price by at least into the around the same universe as that of the Titan. And while we're still not convinced that any of that justifies the Titan's insanely high price tag, we can sort of understand where it's coming from. Acer's Predator Helios 3 300 is a much better example of a laptop that's priced appropriately according to what it's packing under the hood. It's a fully equipped 1080p setup in a portable and semi-affordable package. Our desktop build isn't the cheapest one you can build that relatively closely matches the specs of the Helios 300, so the price gap could be smaller, especially since you're probably not going to pay for Windows, you scoundrel. But even so, building any magic system will likely cost a fair bit more right now than just buying the Helios. Now, obviously, in both cases, the desktop systems we parted together should perform significantly better than the laptops that are modeled after. That's just how it goes. But by going for a laptop, you're usually sacrificing some performance and cooling for portability. But in the case of the Helios 300, none of that really seems significant enough to take it out of the running, especially considering its actual decent dang price. And all things considered, if you're looking for a fully decked out gaming system right now, it seems you could do a whole lot worse than save up for a gaming laptop. That being said, graphics card prices are kinda in free fall right now and will probably fall a lot lower when Nvidia's 11 series cards finally arrive, which should make the desktop route far more attractive again but I digress. We've learned to accept that gaming laptops are needlessly expensive and aren't worth their asking price, and some of them definitely aren't, but after this little experiment, it's clear that that's not always the case, and it's kind of a bill of goods that you're being sold that actually isn't all that right, and you can have your cake and eat it on the go too. And all this leads me to a nice little, like, uh, I guess plug for where they're sending me to America with their brand new Wootware Woot Books that they just brought into the country. This thing has an i7 7700HQ, so it's last gen right now, but it has a GTX 1070, has 32 gigabytes of RAM, has an NVMe drive, has a hard drive. Like, this thing is absolutely amazing. And if you see the prices that Wootware is selling these for on their website, it's absolutely bananas. They're so much cheaper than any other laptop that I've seen in South Africa. And yes, they come as bare bones kits. And even when you add like the rest of the parts to get it over a bare bones kit to make it a full system, they come in quite a bit cheaper than the rest of the systems that I can see in South Africa. So one big thank you to Wootware for sending me with this like dope little laptop, like 1070 fits in here, my friends. 1070, i7, 32 gigs of RAM, 
NVMe drive, hard drive, like has three cooling fans, like absolutely great. Has an RGB keyboard, my friends, and RGB, it's currently blue because I like static colors. But then also they have models that have 144 Hertz panels, 120 Hertz panels. You can pick it up with a 1060, a 1050 Ti. Doesn't matter, go check their website. They have great new uh, laptops out there. You just, like, I'm just, I'm, I was absolutely blown away when they started bringing them in. And then like the chassis, oh my goodness, this isn't the review, we're coming out with a review. There is no flex to this chassis. Like you can maybe get the keyboard to flex a little bit when it's there, but like that is rigid as crap. And then the IO, you get two USB 3, Type C's, two Display Ports, HDMI, power, headphone and microphone, USB, SD card reader, Ethernet jack. Look at that! It has a little flap for the Ethernet jack. It's thin and it still has an Ethernet jack. What are you doing, MacBooks? <laughs> Where you got? Anyways, we wrote this video before, like, where had their laptops coming into the country? But even just taking a look at the pricing that they're bringing into, it's kind of a myth that laptops can't be the same as desktops as far as price to performance ratio goes, because they absolutely can. You can bring that on the road. The fact that I can bring this on the road to, with me to America and I don't have to carry around an entire system is just absolutely phenomenal. And then I get roughly the same performance that I would from a normal consumer desktop here in South Africa. Anyways, that's our plug. That's our uh, video for today. Be sure to smash the like button if you enjoyed this video. If you are going to be picking up laptops or anything of the sort, you can use our affiliate codes that are in the video description. Gives us a small kickback, helps us out a lot, doesn't cost you an extra cent, that good stuff. And there's also a link in the video description for you to check out the Wootware Woot books. Anyways, that's gonna be it. Yes, Twitch, America, subscribe to stay up to date on all of our tech-related content. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye.